Hello, this is Ben119 and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about Super Mario 64 and the main speedrun categories. So if you don't know, there's five main speedrun categories for Super Mario 64. There is 0 star, there's 1 star, there's 16 star, there's 70 star and there's 120 star. So I'm going to be covering all five of those in this video. And I'm just going to be talking a bit about each one, my experience with each category, and what I think will be best for you starting out depending on certain things. So the first categories I'm going to mention is 0 star and 1 star. Now both of these categories are extremely difficult starting out as a beginner, especially if you've not had any experience to be running this game. It will be extremely hard to complete a run, especially 0 star. It's so hard that I've not even tried to do it. I could, probably could do it if I put enough time into it, but I just don't have the patience for 1 star and 0 star. Basically if you don't know what they are, there's an extremely hard trick you have to pull off to get through the 30 star door with 0 stars. And you it's so hard, it's so precise, and I just wouldn't recommend it for beginners. If you've been playing 70 star, or 120, or even 16 for a little while, and you've gotten pretty good and pretty comfortable with the controls, then you could try out a 0 or 1 star run, but personally I don't find it very interesting. But yeah, you can do what you want with it. Alright, so the next category I'm going to talk about is 16 star. Now 16 star is considered to be the best beginner category. And I kind of agree, but at the same time I disagree. It's a bit of a controversial opinion I've got, but with 16 star I agree that the start of the run is very beginner friendly. There is only 15 stars you collect at the start, they're all fast, there's pretty easy strategies to get to them, it's pretty short. It's good, it teaches beginners about movement, and it's the most popular category in the game, so it must be something good about it. Well, it is pretty good, but at the same time, the thing I don't like about it is the MIPS clip trick and the BLJ trick. Now, both of these tricks are not hard, I wouldn't say they're hard, but they can both lose a lot of time if you mess them up at least once or twice. Like, say if you're a beginner and you've just got a sub-20 minute time in 16 star, and then you lose two minutes on the BLJs, or even a minute, that will really mess your run up, and it is honestly surprising how many runs you can lose to these tricks. Like, no matter how much I practice them, I still lose runs, and that's the main reason why I actually don't like 16 stars. not because of the stars you do. I actually really like the fast stars you do at the start, I just don't like how there's not much room for error in 16 star. However, the positives of 16 star are pretty good. Number one, it's a very short category, it's only 20 minutes long, so uh, it can be done like really easily. Like say if you don't have much time in your hands, say you only have like half an hour before you need to do something, you can just do a quick 16 star run and then just carry on. That can't really be said for like 70 star and 120 star because they're both really long. Uh, you probably don't need to put in as much practice, especially if you're a beginner with 16 star, you can kind of just go ahead and do runs because it's so short and easy with the stars, the only things you'll really need to practice are the two main tricks. Uh, unlike 70 star, where you obviously have to learn 70 individual stars, and 120 you'll have to learn all the stars in the game. But with 16 I think it is good that it has that beginner side to it. My experience is 16 star, I've not done uh, the LBLJ route, because I can do LBLJ, but I've just not decided to do it because I don't take 16 star seriously, I might do in the future, if I want to get a good time in 16 star. But I got a 1751, which may sound weird because I have a 51 in 70 star and a 153 in 120 star, so that may sound like a really bad time, and that's only because I don't take it seriously. And in my PB, I think I had three missed throws. I didn't record my PB, by the way, but I think I missed three throws in the final fight, and I still got 17. So it shows I could get a much better time in 16 star. And it's just, I don't know, I just don't enjoy it as much, because there's not as much there's not much room for error. You kind of have to reset pretty much straight away if you make any kind of mistake. Uh, so yeah, that's my opinion on 16 star. I think it's a good category. It's better than 1 and 0 star, obviously. I just don't think it's the best starting out, but you can do what you want. Uh, next category, the next category I'm going to talk about is 70 star. Now 70 star is my favourite category, and in my opinion the category I've got the best time in out of my PBs. So I have a 51, 53 and 70 star, and I really enjoy 70 star. The first time I did a 70 star run, I remember I was just instantly hooked to 70 star. I just wanted to do another run, I wanted to do another run. I wanted to improve, I wanted to change out certain stars, and yeah, that's kind of how I got into speedrunning through 70 star. 
And I think it's really good for beginners. One, because it teaches you a lot about movement. It teaches you a lot about strats. There's a lot of different kinds of levels you have to do. There's different kinds of movement. It's a fun thing because all the stars are really short. So you can kind of swap out certain stars. Like say if you can't do TikTok Clock Conjure Coin, you could swap it out for like Snowman Land Red Coins or Tiny Huge Island Red Coins. Or you could swap it for Hazy Maze Cave, Toxic Maze, etc. There's a few stars you can swap about. There's not as much you can swap in 70 star as there is in 16 star, but there's still quite a lot you can swap. Uh, it's, it's good for beginners as well because there's a lot of uh, movement. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, movement. It's a lot of movement. It's not very strat based. There is a few strats, obviously, especially if you're going for a good time in 70 star. You want to learn some strats, but a lot of your time save will come down to how quick you are at movement rather than lag reduction and things like MIPS clip and BLJs because BLJs are actually banned in 70 star so you won't lose time to BLJs that's the good thing about it uh, it's an hour long I think it's pretty much the perfect length well once you get good at 70 star it'll become between an hour and 50 minutes I'd say if you're really good it'll be like 49 minutes uh, when you're starting out it'll probably take about an hour and a half it really depends how much you practice before your first run but my first run was like two hours, but that's because I didn't practice at all. But my first properly practiced run, I think it was like one hour, 15 minutes. So that sounds about right. So it's about an hour long. Uh, so the good thing about that is the fact that it's not too long, because even though I like 120, it is almost two hours long. And it does get a little bit tiring towards the end. And once I've done a 120 star run, I kind of don't want to do any more that day. Because I've kind of just had enough. I'm like, right, I'm done. I've just done a two hour run I don't see the point in doing another two hour run today with 70 you can kind of do a run and then you kind of feel like doing another one especially if you don't PB uh, it's pretty good because of the, the time saves now the good thing is there is plenty of room for time save in a one hour run especially if your run isn't that optimized yet because with something like 16 star it can be hard to improve your PB even if you know that you've got a really improvable PB and that you're a lot better than the PB you have Sometimes you still can't improve it. I feel that way about 16 star right now. But with 70 star, it's so much easier to improve. And it's really satisfying hitting each mi minute barrier, especially once you get under an hour. Like aiming for each minute barrier and breaking each one is really satisfying. And it's just really fun. And the strats, they just come as you get better. Like you'll start doing certain strats once you get better in 70 star. Overall, I think 70 star is actually the best category in the game, even though I said that before. I just think the length and the tricks and the, what it teaches beginners and how fun it can be getting into it and the competition around it, it can be a really fun category to get, to get started. And if you prefer something slightly longer than 16 star, but not so long that it's like 120 length, then I think 70 star is definitely the category for you. If you are interested in improving movement, and you want to get really fast at certain stars, then 70 star is definitely the category for you. So the final category that I want to talk about is 120 star. Now first I'm going to talk a bit about my experience with 120 star. So I got into 120 star properly I'd say in 2019? No 2020 I'd say actually. Because even before then I did complete runs and I did have a sub 2 time but I wouldn't say I really got into doing runs, I kind of just did runs now and then. Just for a bit of fun because whenever i did runs now and then i would have massive improvements i remember my first ever run was three and a half hours and my second ever run was two hours 45 minutes and that is the biggest pb i'll ever have in 120 star and i'll never get a pb bigger than that ever again it is really satisfying when you start off in 120 because you cut off several minutes at a time and you're improving so fast but once you hit the two hour range, once you get under two hours, you start to slow down a bit. You'll still have pretty big improvements. You may improve by a minute or two even, but you probably won't get five minute improvements from there. Unless you've gone to like practice for ages and then you've come back and done a run with loads of new strats, then you might improve by a lot. Depends on how you like to play Mario. But at this point in 120, I'm really enjoying 120. I have a 15309. And I'm close to 152. I feel like I could get a 151 actually. Uh, I may do some 120 runs soon to try and get a 152 or 151. Uh, my ultimate goal for 120 is 149. 
I think it's a really good goal to aim for for anyone who wants to take 120 more seriously, who's been doing 70 or 16. Uh, the length, I think the length is alright at this point. When I first started with 120 star, I used to find it really long and really hard. But once you've done quite a few 120 star runs and you got used to all the stars and the route, it just doesn't seem as long. It's really weird even though, well to be fair it probably isn't as long because when I first started it it was like two and a half hours and now it's like an hour and fifty. So it is quite a bit shorter to be fair but it just goes a lot faster especially if you know what you're doing on each star it goes really fast. Uh, for beginners, I, in a way I would recommend it because it is a really good category. It's my second favourite category. Uh, in this game and it is really hard to get into that's the only thing I don't like about 120 it's hard to get into if you have not ran 70 or 16 because the skill level you need to even get like a sub 2 hour time is really high you need to be really good at movement you need to be comfortable with like jump kicking on slopes you need to be comfortable with long jumping you need to be comfortable using shells using all the caps you need to know all the stars quite well you need to be comfortable at wall jumping doing several wall jumps uh, if you're playing on N64, it's going to be even harder because you're going to need to do more lag reduction to save more time. If you're playing on Virtual Console, then it's going to be a lot easier because you have no lag whatsoever and the loading times are faster. If you play on Emulator like me, it's kind of a cross between the two. Like, there's a lot less lag on Emulator, but the loading times are still the same. So, yeah. Uh, another thing I'm going to say about 120 Star is the fact that even though it is so hard, don't be put off by what I'm saying. Because if you have got 70 and 16 experience, then you should be able to get a pretty good time going into 120. But I just wouldn't recommend grinding it straight away as your first category. I'd recommend doing something easier, like 70 or 16, like I keep saying. Uh, the 100 coin stars, that's what I'm going to mention next. Because there is a few 100 coin stars in 70 star, but all the ones done in 70 star have uh, not much RNG. And they are very fast 100 coin stars, and the routes are really easy to remember. Maybe I'm just saying that because I've done it so many times. With 120 star, a lot of the 100 coin routes are a lot harder to do. You can lose a lot of time even with small mistakes. And there's just, it's just hard. Like, Snowman's Land 100 is one of those stars that it's not very hard to do casually. But doing it really fast and dealing with all the RNG on the spot can be really hard. Hazy Maze Cave can be extremely hard, especially if you're doing the uh, triple jump strat off the box. To get to one of the coins. It's not a triple jump. It's actually a double jump wall kick. But if you're doing the pro strat. In Hazy Maze Cave. To get all the red coins. That can be really difficult. And if you're doing the BLJ route. Uh, that can be a really hard thing to learn. For a beginner. It can be really daunting. Having to learn that. And probably the hardest 100 coin star. To learn for any beginner. Is Dada Dox 100. Because you can either use the poles. And lose 2 minutes. And be safe. And be happy. Or you could learn the polar strat with the sub and if you're starting out it is very 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 hard to get all eight red coins and still save time once you get good at it you should start to save time with it because you won't be falling off the sub but i wouldn't recommend doing that straight away getting into 120 because it can be hard like you if you fall off the sub you're pretty much not even saving time well if you fall off it more than once you're not saving time uh, the 100 coin stars play a big role in 120 because they're some of the longest stars and you pair them with other stars as well. Uh, you obviously have to learn 120 individual stars, so there is a lot of learning, so you, not only do you need a lot of time to actually do runs, but you need a lot of time to, to practice the stars, especially if you want to get good and you want to keep improving, you need to always be practicing uh, stars to improve. Uh, overall, uh, I think it's good for beginners. I recommend it more for intermediate players who have got good at 16 and 70, like I was saying. I've mentioned it 100,000 times. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it to new players, but it's a good category. It's it's long. The good thing about it being so long is that there's so much room for improvement. Even if you have a pretty good time, you still have a lot of room for improvement, unlike 16 star. So yeah, there you go. Uh, that's my opinion so overall 70 star is my favorite category for beginners highly recommend it that's the one that got me interested 120 star i'd recommend second because it's really cool it's a bit like 70 but it's a lot longer and it's cool it's cool to grind i'm on 120 at the moment 16 star it's a cool category i don't like the end of it but the start of it is really fun and one and zero i don't care about one and zero they're not beginner friendly at all 
So there you go, that's my opinion on the Mario 64 categories. If I missed anything out, please write it in the comments if you have an opinion and I will reply back. If you enjoyed the video, please like the video and subscribe if you're new around here. I'll make some more Mario 64 videos at some point, and before then, goodbye.